we're back. It's another day, another dollar. <laughs> you know, it's funny because I've been posting content for a couple of months now and just I've really just been focusing on getting it to arrive and get it, getting it to be on. You know, like we were talking about um, earlier today, I have a lot of people that are asking questions. Like, I want to get started. I want to make some extra money. I want to side hustle. I'm stuck in the nine to five. And so in this video, we're actually going to go over what we have to do. We're actually going to go over what we would do if we had to start over. If we had no assets, no company, um, no skills, how would me or Jeremy approach that? And like, what angle will we take to, to get back up to what we consider a successful level? I think the first thing that a person has to understand um, is clearly defining their goal. Because if you're going to be happy with a side hustle and you just you think an extra five grand a month would just be fabulous and you could still have all the other areas of your life and, and you think that would seal the deal for you, well, then that's going to be a separate conversation if you're trying to build like a, a really high um, revenue company and obviously different set of steps in there. So I think if we just mock this up sort of as this situation that we see pretty common where the person is stuck in their nine to five, they make just enough money to pay all of their bills. Um, maybe they have a family, couple kids, don't have a ton of free time, but could maybe you know make some time available. How does that person get out of that situation? Knowing what you know today, how do you get out of that? Yeah, so I think, you yeah, know, I think you, you hit the nail on the head in the beginning here. We have to set the understanding of where are you starting from, right? Do you have obligations, right? And it sounds like, look, if you've got a wife, if you've got two kids, you have obligations. Right. Um, and, you know, I think the average American today makes about $55,000 a year. Uh, it's sort of the median wage in the United States. Um, and I think there's a couple different angles to look at here. One is... Um, depending on how successful you want to be and how big you want to go, I'd recommend holding off on getting married and having kids until you've established your career. So if I, if I look back and I go, okay, cool. Um, you know, I'm in a position where I'm in a nine to five, you know, the average American spends 40 hours watching social media or, or TV, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. I take that 40 hours, which is basically a second job. Um, and you know, depending on where I'm at, I either get skill sets or I get clients, right? Like if I, if I had to start back over going back in time and I have no skill sets, but I have the knowledge of mm -hmm. like business or whatever, I would just go, cool. I'm just going to go get some clients, uh, independent contractor. I'm going to hustle. I use the nine to five. I'm going to push for the next six to 12 months to build up a side hustle, build up some clients, maybe some work from home, uh, jobs kind of thing, you know, just to kind of make the revenue, uh, as fast as possible. Um, you know, and if I'm married and I have two kids, okay, cool. If the kids are off to school, what's my wife doing, right? Is she working? Is she hustling? Can she contribute? How are we all pushing in a certain direction to get us to the point where, uh, you can fully switch over to running your own business? I think that's probably where I'd start. I don't know. Where would you start? Married, two kids? Yeah. I mean, I think the thing that people first need to realize is that, they have to make the decision and decide that they're going to do whatever it is. And it has to be a tangible thing. So it's like, okay, I make seven grand a month, total household income. We'll just use this example, but we got the car payments, we got the mortgage, we got groceries, we got the kids sport, you know, we got, we're, we're tapped out. We're saving a little bit for retirement, but we're never really going to get anywhere. It actually re relates to that quote from Alice in Wonderland, where it's like, you got to run just to keep up. But if you want to get anywhere, you got to go twice as fast. Yeah. And so I challenge people to, the, to first, I absolutely do not change everything. Like Dave Ram Ramsey recommends, like stop buying the coffee, turn your old car back in. Don't do that because it's not sustainable. You're gonna hate your life and and it, you're gonna make it that much harder to overcome this next level that you're gonna get to. So what I recommend, the first thing to do is just don't, don't change anything at all. Uh, keep, you know, if you're being wasteful, sure, cut it out, but, but don't do these drastic measures that make your life worse. And then if the target is $5,000, income extra a month how could you get that and, and if you don't have the time what i want you to if you think you don't have the time what i want you to do as an exercise is pull up your screen time right now like jerry said see how much time you're spending on social media TikTok, uh youtube because there is time there the, the important thing isn't for you to figure out on day one how do you get to five thousand extra a month the important thing is to get something 
extra. And then once you get that something, maybe you're, you wanna do a side hustle as a wedding photographer and you just get one wedding gig per month for $1,000. Now that, that doesn't seem like much, but once you do that, you will then have a new reality and then be able to think forward with the steps to get to those, to those next levels. So knowing nothing, if I had that, I would do the same thing, side hustle, some sort of thing that I was good at or interested in. I could edit shorts. I could do real estate photography. I could, you could even do like DoorDash and stuff. Now you don't have a lot of leverage in those things and it's not an additional skill set, but it will get you some money. But the money isn't the important thing. It's, it's your ability to create that money, you know? And so that, that's why it kind of rolls out the DoorDash and those um, time for money type jobs because you're always going to have to do that to create that money and there's no phasing out of it. So, but knowing what I know now, like from a very high level, I would 100% learn how to sell and get into commission only sales. I think there are a lot of really good products that require a salesman and you can make really, really, really good money. You, uh, TikTok actually took down a short the other day. I put up a short that said, if you wanna make, like people ask me how to make money, how can I increase my income? How can I make 20 or 40 grand a month? 100% get into commission only sales. And TikTok took it down because it violated their unusual expectation policy. And that, like, like are you serious, dude? Like, how, uh, so um, now, yeah, maybe it's not the norm. Maybe average salesman makes 10 grand, but there are plenty of, you know, uh, op sales opportunities where if you're hustling, you can make 20 grand a month. Yeah. So Good. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, I think, so yeah, if I, if, if, if someone's like, look, if you're playing the long game, sales is a good opportunity in the long game, I think, uh, an entrepreneurship, right? So I think at the end of the day, depend, like, like if we take that step back of what game do you want to play? Because sales can be a roller coaster, right? It doesn't have to yeah. be, but <clears throat> it can be a month where you make zero dollars, and next month you can make thirty thousand dollars. Yeah. And some people are like, <clears throat> if they don't have the financial discipline to control themselves, <clears throat> maybe that's not the job for them, right? Yeah. Or that's not the opportunity for them. You know, as an entrepreneur, I'm sure you and I have gone through the same thing. We're like, dude, things, everything's awesome, and then you're reinvesting into the business, and all of a sudden, yeah. some clients don't renew, or something happens, or whatever else, you know, that kind of thing, so. Um, yeah, it's up and down. I mean, it, and it can happen, and I think people actually have this consideration or idea about sales, and that they're not a people person, they wouldn't be good at it, they're an introvert. If you look at all of the really, really successful salesmen, they all said that about themselves ahead of time, and that is kind of the difference between somebody that's willing to take that leap of faith and go, you know what, I might suck, I didn't make my first sale when I came into sales for four months. I quit three times. I, I thought I was never going to be good. It took me four months. But that's the part about investing in yourself because now if, you, if you're good at sales and, and even if you hate it or you think you hate it or you think you know what it is, I just I encourage you to like look into it a bit more and find somebody that's in it to, to like just to talk to about it. Because it's not everything that you think it is. It's probably a little bit different than, than what you're thinking or the idea that you have. And once you learn that, you now are valuable in every single industry. You can go to any industry. It's job security. You invest in yourself. You're good at sales. And then that's, that's my whole thing that I realized like a couple months ago. I'm like, dude, if you're good at marketing too, if you can get clients and you can close clients, you can work in any industry you want forever and ever and ever. Amen. Because companies will always need marketing and they're always going to need sales, you know? So that's what I would do. And, and the mistake people make is they start their side hustle and then day one, week one, month one, month two, they don't have any results and they go, oh, this sucks. And, and they, they, the, the lead time to actually becoming successful is more like six months of probably not getting paid very much. Like that's, that's the sweat equity you got to put in, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, um, there was a great book I read, um, talks about the moat effect basically, or the dip, I think it was called the dip. And it was mm -hmm. basically, um, most people like when they get started with something, you know, you feel like you're, you feel like a, as you spend time, you should be getting better on average, right? You kind of, you put in yeah. an hour, you get 1% better or whatever it is, right? Like yeah. a direct relationship. But what really happens is, is you suck for however long, and then eventually you get good. But most people <laughs> don't get past the suck, right? Yeah. Uh, and so that's like for businesses, like if a business is really difficult or a job is really difficult, that's why you get paid really well because most people can't get past the suck, right? Some yeah. people become average salespeople and they can make $50,000 a year. 
But if you can make it past that and invest and put the time and effort in, you know, then yeah, you can get to a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, four hundred thousand, right? Where yeah. or a million dollars. There are million dollar salespeople, you know, can be done. But um, yeah, same thing with business, I think, right? You can find a relatively easy business, you can get it to a certain level and boom, perfect, you're happy. It's all good, yeah. right? Like yeah. or you can not make it to that past that first break point, that first pain point of figuring out how to sell yourself, figuring out how to deliver, mm-hmm. figuring out how to market and get leads, you know. So yeah. Um yeah, and it's interesting too because that the same vehicle, same product, same sales process, same marketing, and you got a guy that does fifty grand in commissions, and then you got a guy that does two fifty. Same everything else. Yeah, you know, and so that 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 really is part of it, and, and there's a lot of variables in there too in terms of how much that uh, is that person more intelligent, is he more aware, it, does he just practice more, does as he just he just have experience, you know, all those things come into play, and so just be aware of that you know, that spectrum of, for those of you that are trying to like kind of get over this hump or you're trying to improve your life, you want a side hustle, is there is a spectrum. You've seen these coaches saying like, oh, sign up for this program. It's a done for you uh, Amazon, you know, or Shopify store. You, you do a $30,000 investment and we're going to be making you blah, blah, blah. And, and so like somewhere, somehow there, there are ways to make money in doing that type of thing, but you don't necessarily need to get that package and then day one expect that you're going to be making it you know that's more of a i think those are more of a gimmicky type product but but yeah i don't know i think the most the asset that pays you the most is investing in yourself it it, it, because it just you begin to snowball it's like i I called you the other day and and was like hey i'm gonna have this new product and boom within five minutes we've got you know your sales team, my product, and the potential to do, to add 20, 30 K of revenue a month, you know, with, with the snap of a finger. And yeah. that's, and that's because we have both invested in ourselves. You've invested in your company. I've invested in my company. We've invested in our relationship. Like all of those things become assets that the young entrepreneur, the guy that's just starting out, he doesn't see the benefits of being able to have a, a conversation in five minutes that's going to have that kind of impact on revenue because there's no investment in self. He hasn't built himself up. He doesn't have the resources, the assets, the know-how. Those are all investments in yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I think, look, if I was just getting started again, uh, again, probably, uh, and I've sort of followed this process, invest in yourself uh, to me personally, until you are the top producer in your company, in your industry, wherever you're at, right? Because almost anyone, yeah, I see 18-year-olds just starting a business. Is it possible? Totally. But wouldn't it be great, instead of trying to start at 18 years old and not know anything, um, and you may think you know a lot at 18, but God, we're all cocky at 18. Yeah. But you know, <laughs> uh, like it's like, go, okay, good. Let me go find, ideally, somebody else who is either, uh, you know, already built a successful business and is now building another one, and just learn from them or who's on the mantra to really be big and think big, right? Mm-hmm. You know, wherever that is, right? And get in on the ground floor or if it's a really big company, I don't know how much you're going to learn there, right? But if you can be surrounded by greatness, you can be the top person in that role. Invest in yourself, go to conferences, read books, uh, listen to audio books, do courses, you know, learn to communicate better, whatever it is, right? Get yeah. get everything, make sure you're personally healthy, fit, right? Get Get yourself sorted out, you know, on on your own self first. And then once you're at least, you know, I think in almost, unless, you know, you're in the service industry, but, you know, even there, I think, you know, if you could become a a McDonald's owner, right? Like I think uh, our store manager or things like that, there's a path, right? But if you're at the top of that, then go start your own business, right? Yeah. Yeah. Before you go into side hustles, right? If you've got a 40 hour job, ideally find something where there's an upside opportunity, whether that's commissions, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. whether that's extra hours, overtime, um, training, whatever else it is, right? Like for me, I worked 50, 60 hours at my last job for the last, like when I had a job for seven years or something, I worked an extra 10 to 20 hours a week, whether I, uh, that doesn't even necessarily count personal training time, things like that. That was uh, putting, doing extra jobs, extra hustle, things like that. I got to be really good at that job. And then I was able to parlay that into my own business because yeah. I had the experience where I where I could show, hey, I have you know I have stats, I have metrics, I have results that I yeah. can show, things like that. So I think I don't know. I think that's 
probably a relatively successful mo model. Yeah. Oh, I totally agree. That's actually that's a really good point because you basically got paid for seven years to to train to learn how to sell. Yep. You know, and and so you can get uh, commission only sales. You can also get commission plus base sales for a little bit of security. But but you're right. You don't necessarily off and just totally start something different. Ideally, it, if you need more money, are you are you do you have overtime available? Is there another job position? Is there uh, a promotion that you could get is there any way you could get a raise like squeeze every bit of juice out of it but even if you were to get a 50 percent raise every year for the next five years it's it's only so much that's not even realistic but if you if you were to say a 10 percent raise um so that's where the more mentality comes from is like get everything you can out of your current job find something that kind of goes along with that you might even be able to sell for the company that you have now. Like, mm -hmm. um, there's just so many different opportunities. And you're right, it is hard. You can't go day one, like, I'm gonna be, a, you know, I'm gonna start a business day one, knowing nothing about anything and be successful. That's a rocky, that's a rocky road, you know, like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I think you and I are in a different boat now. We've both started businesses. We've both had a level of success. Like if both of us were wiped out tomorrow, we would go start another business we would go get some clients, we would deliver a product or service to them right. that they would like, and we would just go start another business because it would be relatively easy for us to, to build it up. But yeah. that's because we've done it, right? Yep. It's just that confidence of, cool, I've done it, I know what works, what doesn't work. You know, we wouldn't necessarily hire a team, we would just, you know, probably work remotely, you yep. know, and we've got a network now, but if you got rid of the network, you know, we would have to network and find people and we'd still get clients. Yep, yeah. No, that's that's exactly it. That's that's kind of like the those are the assets that you have. You know, when you're trying to figure a problem out, you will go like, well, where where are my assets? And it could be relationships. It could be your skills. Um, it could be a product. It could be a really good idea. You know, it could be any of that stuff. So it's cool, man. Well, hopefully that was helpful. What I'm going to do is uh, there's actually a link on my website to schedule a call with me. I'm actually curious to see if you, uh, this doesn't apply to you or there's some exceptional situation where you don't think this, that this would help and it's just kind of outside of the realm of that. It's at jamierossi.com. You can schedule a call. It doesn't cost anything. And you guys can leave in the comments if you think, um, you know, if you've tried this or you're on the brink of just trying to become successful or you've started before and failed. Uh, yeah, just, just let me know in the comments, man. We're, we try to help you out.